Indie Shooter. Brought to you by Akidio, Adamus, Band Pro Film and Digital, Black Magic Design, and Carl Size. So she is a vice president of film production of Warner Brothers Pictures. So she is a boss. <laughs> she is a boss. Not the boss, a, a boss. <laughs> You earn your Bachelor of Arts degree in Italian. This is amazing. <laughs> How did that happen? So I'm from Nashville. I went to Princeton. I originally thought I was going to study comparative literature, which you have to be fluent in two languages in addition to English. I had mostly studied Spanish, and, but always knew I wanted to take Italian. Um, so freshman year, I took Italian 101, fell in love with it, and uh, basically just got absorbed by that small, tiny department, and they were fabulous. Um, comparative literature, I learned, was a lot of literary theory, which was not interesting to me. So I uh, ended up going, living in Italy both for a summer and then a semester, and studied Italian cinema and literature and art and all of the above, um, and really enjoyed it. So I, I was just, I knew I had to write a thesis, and I thought, what do I want to write a thesis in? So. I wrote it about an Italian, Italian subject. My original plan for studying finance had more to do with my parents saying, we're sending you to Princeton and you're majoring in Italian. Um, and, and so I got a finance certificate. <laughs> uh, I did really like economics and that's why I wanted to study it and, and was really intrigued by the business of it all. I actually wrote a paper on the difference between financing Italian cinema and financing wow. uh, US cinema and the different systems. Um, which is interesting and ha continues to change as the marketplace changes. But um, so it really had a little bit more to do with pleasing my parents and thinking that I was going to go into banking uh, before I realized I hated banking. So uh, <laughs> and then I decided to move out here. So originally I moved out to Los Angeles and I wanted to be a producer. I had done a lot of theater in high school and college, directing and producing theater, but knew I didn't want to move to New York, um, partially because I love cinema. I love the I love theater. I like, sorry, sorry, the theater in the cinema sense. I like people going to watch a movie and experiencing it together. So I started working for a producer um, named Linda Opes, who is amazing. She's yeah, still a, a good <laughs> friend uh, and mentor of mine. Um, and she was just a really excellent teacher. And so, you know, working for her as her intern, and then she hired me part time, I, I got to learn more about the business because I really didn't know anything. I moved out here knowing nobody, um, getting an internship with her and just taking it as far as I could. Um, so originally, and I moved out here also in the middle of the writer's strike, so nothing was happening. So you're just kind of spinning your wheels and going, oh my gosh, please can we like get out of development and, and nothing's going on. Um, I came to her company because at the time someone was working with her that went to Princeton. So I got in the door because of that. Um, and then I very quickly realized that she was just kind of brilliant. Um, and I worked really hard to impress her. You know, it was like, how do I show her that I mean business and that I am here for the long haul? Um, what did you do? <laughs> as an intern? <laughs> you do a lot of things as an intern. And it's a lot of... It's uh, what, a, what did you do to impress her? Um, I, I gave notes on scripts. I think she, yeah, the notes were what impressed her and, and how, how I approached things um, in a thoughtful manner and like what I was thinking about when I was thinking about story um, and then just working really hard. Um, and especially, it, it depends on the company and, and the type of internship, but like there are people that come from a different era and expect you to to, to when they say jump, you say how high I will go above and beyond. Um, and that's part of it. So it's like doing everything that was asked of me and then proving myself on the creative level. I, I went to work for two different producers after that, kind of both in the digital space and the uh, television space and realized that I was not fulfilling what I am passionate about and wanted to come out here and do, which was movies. Um, and I never really thought about working at a studio until uh, a friend of mine was basically like, this desk is opening up, I think you should go up for it. Uh, and it was at Warner Brothers, which I 
when I thought about a studio, I really only wanted to work there because they champion filmmakers. We're trying to make movies that are both big and fulfill that tentpole space, but also have heart and intelligence behind them and make you think. And at that time, we they were making you know Nolan's Batman's and uh, like Gravity, I think, was on on the horizon. And they just you know it's, they were passionate about filmmakers. And I'm not someone who really wants to make movies that are spectacle for spectacle's sake, um, because I, I like thinking, and I like movies that make you think. Um, so I was like, OK, if I want to go to a studio, I want to work at Warner Brothers. I got my foot in the door there and, and started working there and learned who all the executives were, sort of learning the studio side of things, uh, which is much more exciting because we have to be making movies. So you're constantly in production because we have to be putting things out. Um, whereas on the producing side, it is it can be feast or famine. Um, the because executive, of the development. well, because of the development, you yeah. as a producer, you have to be making things, but it's it's only your ability to get things made as opposed to a studio like we have shareholders, and if we're not making things, it's, say. yeah, that's it's not <laughs> good. I realized I wanted to stay at the studio. I wanted to learn from the executives there and become a creative executive and really. What I liked about being at a studio as opposed to some production companies is that you can work on a wide range of material because I have varied tastes. So, and what, what ends up happening at a production company is even at the prolific ones, they become identified for having a certain brand and they become identified for having you know, your, what you're known for. So you could be stuck just working on one type of film at a production company. If you love that type of film, great, go for it. Or maybe you have two things that are your niche. Um, and that's really excellent. But I like being able to work on sci-fi and fantasy and noir and family movies um, and, and all of the above, because that's just what gets me excited. Um, so I, wanted, I decided I wanted to stay at the studio and um, applied, which was a lengthy process of you get given two scripts, you read them, you do notes on them, you have interviews with seven people, they grill you on you know, different uh, parameters of questions that they could have. You know, do you know writers in town? Do you know directors? Do you know agents, managers? You know, like, why are you an asset to our company? Why should we keep you? Um, I had different answers for different <laughs> things. But uh, my, one of my favorite ones was like, who would you hire to rewrite uh, this project that I was really familiar with? And I said, how much money do I have to spend? Because it matters. Like, yeah. do we get to spend a lot of money, or do I have? Do, am I on a budget? Um, so, you know, you have to have the different people and parameters in your head for what you can do there. Uh, and then, after a three-month process, I got told, "We like you. You're you know this company, but you're too green. We don't think you can do this job because you haven't done it before." So, for the next four or five months, every weekend, every script that came in, I did notes and lists and said, here, here are my notes, here are my lists, let me get better, let me show you that what I'm doing. And then when I was uh, about to take another job, got told, oh wait, don't go. So it definitely was a matter of being persistent and pushing and, and passion. yeah, and passion and threatening to leave. And, you love <laughs> and I will say that we are looking for unique voices, and, and what's hard about being a creative person is you just have to keep pushing and you have to keep creating. Like, I talk to so many people who are like, I'm a writer, and I'm like, what have you written? And they're like, well, we're working on the thing. <laughs> and I'm like, right, then you're a writer. Um, so, you know, you just keep generating, is all I can say, if you want to be on the creative end of things and, and hone and listen to people who have good notes and like keep pushing there. I think you know what helped me get better. My job is giving notes. Like I read all the time, and I'm constantly trying to make sure that someone's vision is achieved either on the page or in the cinema. So it's a lot of you know trying to listen to what a filmmaker's vision is, listen to what a writer's trying to do, not jump to conclusions, and and hone things to make them better. Like my goal is to make your art better um, and broadly appealing for a wide audience. <laughs> uh, so um, what, what I try to do is, you know, listen and execute, you know, read things or, or watch things and, and 
understand what I'm feeling and hope that that will connect with an audience. So it's a lot of, I think this is what you're trying to do. It's not quite working here, here, and here. You know, these would be my suggestions, but please come back with something better. Like, I'm throwing out things that I'm like, this could work, but I want you as creators to come back with and being like, I hear what's not working for you. This was my idea based on what you said. So that's, that's like my job. In terms of moving up at Warner Brothers, it has been a lot of, champ, you know, you have to champion writers, you have to champion people, give good notes, work on lots of movies, um, fight for things. As a junior executive, you're not so much choosing the projects that we're making as you are servicing the projects that we're making. So I, I worked on projects, there were some that I loved, um, and there were some that were made based on the, the senior level executives at the company. You know, subsequently, it's more about being specific with your opinion, you know, and saying, I believe in this, I'm going to fight for this person, I want to fight for this movie. Um, right now, I have a movie that is a smaller kind of, like, has a tinge of faith to it. It's about music and a teen dying of cancer. And all of my bosses were like, Kate, you're crazy. We don't make these kinds of movies. It's like we didn't have a model for how to make it. And that's more the challenge that I faced was kind of like, these are movies that get made, but Kate, like, is, are you sure this is a Warner's movie? That was the question. Um, and people are responsive to making those movies. There's a marketplace for them. Um, I think life is so hard that like, people want to go to the movies to escape. And we see so many fake superheroes, and like everything is superhero and Marvel and DC and like, by the way, I love those movies. I go to all of them. But I think people like seeing real people. That's why Hidden Figures does well. And I fought and fought and fought and worked with the script and worked with the director and we put forward a script that everyone was like, this is really, this is really good. And I was like, I know. So that will be something that we're not shooting this year, but hope to shoot next year. So on a, on a writer, I'm looking for um, both talent. Like, and that's something that, that you can hone if you keep practicing and working and honing and honing and honing. Some people are given it and you're just like, huh. Like when you meet someone who's just multi-talented and you're like, how did, how did you get blessed with that much goodness? This is not fair. Um, but the, you, you work at, and when I'm reading a sample, for example, um, that it depends on what kind of sample I'm looking for. If I'm looking for a sci-fi movie, I'm like, how's your plotting? Is your world building good? Like, do I follow everything that's happening? Does it all make sense? Do you come up with some good twists or something unexpected? For most family movies, I'm looking at your ability to, ed to execute humor and heart. Um, so it's, are the do I care about the characters? In any movie, do I care about the characters? If I don't, that's a problem. Um, and, and is it funny and is it charming and do you make me feel something when I'm reading it on the page? Like, that's what I want to find when I'm looking for people to, to come do a rewrite of something or, or crack something. Um, there are people that are really good at big ideas. So it's like if I have a movie like Minecraft, which is a completely open sandbox video game with no story, I have to have someone that I'm like, they're really good at ideas. Like, we don't know what this movie is. Hopefully they can come up with it. So it's, you know, it's finding those people to crack that like big nut, um, which is hard. So that those are like the various things of writers that I look for, and I think it just takes being persistent. You know, continue writing, continue rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. Um, so yeah, I take notes. I, I will say one of the one of the most difficult things I think as an artist or specifically as a writer and an, and for studio level movies, you have the studio who's giving you notes, the director who's giving you notes, the fancy 300 pound gorilla producer who's giving you notes, and they are probably not all in line. So you have to figure out how to listen to all of them and either choose the person you're going with, which you can do, often people choose the director, they're the director, or figure out how to listen to all of the notes and synthesize a solution that works for everybody and makes the project better. That's really hard. I'm not like, that's just like, those are the echelons of people that, that we hire, you know, when something's not working and it's like, we need a week from this person to just like solve this. Um, and uh, for a director, 
The director's a whole different bag. So, you know, that you're from a director, if I'm watching your movie, I'm saying, like, did you, similar things of, like, is this shot well? Is it interesting? Am I moved? How are they placing the camera? How are they coaching the actors? You know, are, the, are they getting great performances? Are they telling the story well? Um, and, and that's what I assess when I, you know, watch something. Uh, when I meet with a director, I am curious about what makes you passionate, like why, what are you driven by. Um, I'm also curious about how well you sell yourself, because you don't just have to sell yourself to me, you have to sell yourself to my bosses. So like, I want to, and, and, and we're putting you in charge of a business. Like, as studio executives, we are looking for CEOs in directors. Like, can we hand this person hundreds of millions of dollars and a crew of 200 and know that they're gonna execute. I mean, we're looking for vision. We wanna see passion. We wanna see why you have to tell the story and what specifically you're drawn to about it and, and um, you know, believe that you can do that and execute it. And then it is, and then there's a, the there's a different element to it of like, do we trust you? I mean, it comes from you having done it before, which is an awful thing to say, but true. Um, yeah. you, we generally, Warner's very, 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 very rarely hires first time directors. And if we do, they are being mentored by a director that we work with. They were backed by Todd Phillips and Zack Snyder and like people that we work with that, that we trust and, and they're standing by you. Um, so there, it's that, and it's also just presentation, your reputation, you know, we talk to crews, we talk to physical production people from other studios, you know, we're like, how do they do for you? It gets around. If you're directing um, and you want to be a director, then you need to direct. So you need yeah, to make, you need to be making things. Yeah. Um, but you can be making things for on a short level, you know, and like getting it on Vimeo, getting it on, um, Various websites, YouTube less so. There, are, there are aggregates of Vimeo in particular, and I'm trying to think of another one. But they have staff picks, so it's the kind of thing where, like, I'll go look at the shorts that are being supported by the website because they're just that good, mm -hmm. and like that's how you rise to the top without representation. Um, and it's make it's submitting to festivals. It's going, you know, it's making the 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 first features, the first time features, and, and you know, getting in the door at Sundance, getting in the door at South By, like, those are the places to when be, you go sim to, to sim the yeah. We, and we look, we look at those festivals, um, but more importantly, and I know this is terrible, you get representation at those festivals, and it is important to have representation. Um, it, it's important on a number of levels, but, and, and what I would say is that now, over the past few years, the agencies are making a push to represent female directors and writers. They really are. Um, and so you there is more opportunity. Them, oh, yeah. Do you a list of the directors, women directors? Or? Yeah, they, they will send us lists. Um, I have friends who, at agencies who refuse to send me a list if it's not 50% women, so that they, mm -hmm. they are pushing it. I always put women on my director's list. You know, I want to be sure that we are giving them the opportunity. Um, but it does take, it takes making a feature or two um, to really get noticed. But it, but it can be a short, like there, and there are so many ways to make shorts, whether it's through AFI or through, um, I feel like Refinery29 is doing shorts. Mm -hmm. uh, End of the Line has a series, Smashbox has a female director series. Like there are ways to do it, you just have to find it and make it. Um, and that, that's the, the hard part. The hard part is that I know it's, it's easier said than done and we don't always have the finances to yeah. uh, not work for six months. But if you can make it happen, I'll be honest, like I waited tables at home until I had enough money to move out here before I got paid. Like before I got paid. I knew I was not getting paid when I first moved out here and I was like, okay, I'll save up six months of waiting tables and move to Los Angeles. So. Create whatever nest egg you can, you know, find friends, find parents, help, help them help you finance a short film and get it made. If you have a script that you like, um, I, I recommend putting it on the blacklist and 
and honestly paying for people to read it so that you have readers read it, read it on the blacklist, get it scored, and so that it gets to the top on the blacklist. If you get on the blacklist, you're more likely to have a manager or agent read your script, read it, sign it, um, you know, like sign you. And honestly, if things are making it on the blacklist, people are passing those scripts around because they're good writing. I love sci-fi um, and I love, I love fantasy. I like um, places that take you to other worlds. I think with anything that's in the theater now, you have to be like, I always go back to Alan Horn, who's the head of Disney, but used to run Warner Brothers. He kills it wherever he is. But he is constantly saying, if you're making a theatrical movie, you have to see it big or you have to see it now. So you are trying to generate things that make a difference to see it in the theater. So other worlds really help. I also think that um, if you're going into to fantasy, it's just something that you can say, wow, like I didn't possibly imagine this happening. Um, and then other things that I like are just stories that have hope and some truth about the human existence in them. That's really it. I'm not big on horror, but horror works. Um, but that's just my personal taste. What roadblock did you get along the way? And how did you get around it? Um, well, you know, being told no a lot and just keeping your head down and doing the work. Um, there are challenges and politics and people who are not going to like you and not be your champions and you just have to find the people that are your champions and that want to work with you and that will fight for you. Um, and that's not easy, you know, and, uh, and it's just a matter of being consistent and knowing who you are and what's important to you and, and um, staying true to that. How would you say your transition was from doing an independent production like you were working on to going into a corporate environment again with Warner Brothers? Um, so at the, at the production companies, I went from like two teeny tiny ones to one that was much bigger. So it was a little bit more like back onto that corporate path. Um, in terms of, I mean, there's cultural shifts. There are, and that has a lot to do with the leadership at any company and what the, like, what the company is like as a whole. Um, you know, whenever, whenever you're in the independent space or working with individual people, the, the office dynamics are three people. Um, so like, it's, it's really like how, how well do you get along with your peers and at a corporate strategy, you know, you have to be a little bit more polished and, and professional and on your game. Um, and then in terms of what we're making, like I can, like on, as a producer, you are like, you have to be tenacious and fight for everything and like love it and, and know that you see a way for it to be a movie, but like, and know that you can take it other places, which is helpful, you know? So it's like, if I can't get it made here, then I can, you know, maybe sell it to these foreign entities and like put together this financing package this way and make it that way. Or like, if I get this star attached, then I can make it that way and, and they sell in these territories. At Warner Brothers, I know what we're making and I can tell you very quickly, like, that's not, like, we're not going to make it and I'm just gonna say like, sorry, like this isn't happening. Um, there are movies that I work on that are harder shots that I know are going to be on me to prove that they are a Warner Brothers movie. So that's just me being tenacious with a piece of material that I'm passionate about. But I wouldn't even take that shot if I didn't see a window to get it through. So um, you mentioned how for director and writer to create it, the way to get seen and to, do, to produce the work. And I wanted to ask, uh, for students who want to get into development, what would you say the homework or how do you um, produce like quantifiable, visible results to prove your skills? So, A, love reading. Like, that's going to be a big thing. A lot of it is just getting the internships to, um, to, to show that you love reading, you know? It's like if you get an internship at a production company, you're just going to be reading. So it's, you know, it's just turning around good comments, good summaries, succinct summaries. Um, and, and that's kind of the practical knowledge. It's just a lot of content analysis and your opinion and honing your opinion and learning what works, what doesn't work, you know, kind of trying to figure out and study that. Um, second step is I highly recommend working at an agency. Um, it is, it can, it, it can 
be difficult, it can be frustrating, but it is like grad school. You know, you go work in an agency for a year or two on an agent's desk and you learn so much because they are the hub of information. Like they know what deals are happening, where, what Netflix is buying, what Warner Brothers is buying, what Disney is buying, you know, who are they hiring? They know, you know, ways to get things made that like at Warner Brothers, I know Warner Brothers, I know the Warner Brothers producers, I know the writers we work with, and I have friends elsewhere and we talk, but like the agencies know all of it. Um, and, and so going to work there is how you then get a job working at a studio or working at a production company. But a lot of places, like almost all of the assistants we hire now have to have agency experience. How do you balance your work life from your personal life for women, you know, from dating, going out, all of that, and having all the responsibilities, pressures you have to, to, you know, having like a full life and balanced life? Yeah. I hate the word balance. Um, it's not, it's not in balance. Uh, life isn't ever in balance. There are times when I'm leaning more on my personal work, personal life, and I'm deciding that work is taking a back seat. Um, there are times when my work is all consuming. Uh, it definitely depends on, you know, where you are in your career, what projects you're working on, you know, what's happening in things. But, you know, I try to make time for myself and not like I spent this entire past week, every night, it was like, I need you to read this book overnight, read this script overnight. I had overnight reads every single night, and last night I was like, fuck oh. it, I'm watching Moonstruck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, so you have to do what is satisfying to you, and sometimes that is working. Like, sometimes that is throwing yourself into it and just being like, I'm gonna do it, I don't care. And then you just have to like, you know, rejigger stuff when you're like, oh my gosh, I, it's been two weeks and I haven't seen my best friend. That's not okay. But it happens, and like it happens for them too. But I think it's really unfair for us to try and put things in, in balance. Like I just don't, it's a seesaw, you know? You're constantly trying to, to, to do what's important to you and you only have so much time and energy of yourself that you can give. Indie Shooter, brought to you by Akidio, Adamus, Band Pro Film and Digital, Black Magic Design, and Carl Size.